Hello, and welcome to Bernina Monogramming 101 webinar. This is a 30-minute webinar with questions at the end. At the control panel, you can type your questions in the questions pane. Our presenter is Christy Bircham. Christy has over 25 years of experience teaching machine embroidery and is currently manager of Bernina Education Programs. Welcome, Christy. Thanks, Julie, and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited to present Monogramming 101 to you. So let's take a look at what we're going to learn today. We'll do a quick overview of monograms and just what they're used for and a little bit about monogramming conventions. And then we will spend a good bit of time talking about different ways to create monograms. So we're actually gonna cover four different ways that you can create a monogram. And then we are going to wrap up with how to stitch on a towel. Towels are one of the most commonly monogrammed items. So we wanna be sure you're set up for success and ready to stitch them. So before we get started, I'm curious what kind of monograms you like to do. So Julie, if you're, you will launch our poll, let's see which type of monogram are you most interested in. Okay, go ahead and take a second and choose your favorite. Okay, all right, Julie, go ahead and close the poll and let's see what the results are. Oh, looks like a lot of you like three letter monograms and even more of you like all of the types of monograms. So that's great, awesome. Well, um, Julie, go ahead and uh, close those poll results and we will look at how to create those different types of monograms. So what should you monogram? There are a lot of different projects that you can monogram and perhaps you're looking for ideas on what you can monogram. Here we've got just some different types of projects you might be interested in monogramming and always keep in mind that you can monogram projects that you're making from scratch like this little pouch or a great thing to monogram are pre-made items like towels and napkins and so on. Uh, one of the items I really like is this little dob kit and in this case, the monogram is actually done on a piece of leather and then attached to the kit. So sometimes things that are even hard to monogram, maybe hard to get under the hoop, you can do your monogram on something separate and then attach it to the project. So if you're looking for project ideas on what to monogram, you can visit our website, wealso.com. And I'm gonna pull that up here and show you We Also. And when you go to wealso.com, there is a search bar over here on the right-hand side. So if you click in that search bar, you can type in the word monogram, and then you are going to see all of the results of different blog posts about monograms. So we've got uh, this recent post by Julie about how to monogram towels, napkins. There's a whole post about tips and techniques lots of posts about that and here is a post about that leather patch i was talking about so we also is a great place to get ideas on how to do your monogram for those of you who said you liked a one letter monogram there is a project on we also called embossed embroidery and this is actually done with embroidery software and you can see how parts of it are left as white space they're left open and the rest of it is pressed down with a special stitch that's created in the software. Um, so if you're interested in that single letter monogram, you might wanna check out the embossed embroidery project. So let's look at a few rules for monogramming. Just a few basics. A lot of you said you like those three letter monograms. So when you're doing three letter monograms, you've got a couple different ways you can do it. One is when all three letters are the same size. And when all three letters are the same size, typically you have the first initial, the middle initial, and then the last initial just right in a row, first, middle, last. If you have the larger letter in the middle, like you see here, then your last name goes in the middle. 
So here, my name's Christy K. Burcham. So the C and the K go on either side of the B. That's what you normally do if you have a larger letter. And then what if you have a couple that you're wanting to make a monogram for a couple? Usually the larger letter in the middle is the last name. And then the usually, typically the bride's or wife's name is on the left and the gentleman's name is on the right. Of course, that's just tradition, so you can certainly mix it up. There are lots of different types of couples and names and hyphenated names. Um, so you can actually do a web search on monogram etiquette and you can find all different types of rules for those special situations. Let's now look at how we build those monograms. And I wanna start with using pre-made monograms. So this is to me the easiest way to create a monogram is to use letters that have already been digitized, already been created to use as a monogram. And the one I want to use as an example today is from embroideryonline.com. So let's go there. Um, here is embroideryonline.com. And the collection we're looking at, the number is 12719. And so I'll search for that and you'll see it here. It's called Essential Monograms. And what I like about this monogram set is I like that really traditional monogram with the big letter in the middle and the smaller letters on either side and they're kind of intertwined with each other. And that's how these are designed to be stitched. You can see how they've got the swirls that come out to the sides of the larger letters. And then when you look at the smaller letters, they're a little simpler so they can sit in those swirls. So um, this is one collection. This is one that you can find on embroideryonline.com or from your local dealer. You can also search on Embroidery Online for monograms. And then you can find all types of monograms. Now, what I like to do when I do a search is to then filter that search to collections. And that way I'm seeing just the groups of different types of monograms. And there are so many different ones available. So once I've purchased those designs, how do I actually use them? Because I've got to combine them together um, to be able to stitch them out. Well, you could actually do that right on your machine. So I've got my machine here and I'm going to be using the 880, um, but the steps I'm showing you here could be done on other Bernina embroidery machines as well. So here I've pulled up the 880 and I'm gonna switch over to embroidery. And I've already put my designs on a USB stick. So here we've got the USB stick. I'll select that. And then this folder 12719 is where I've put my designs. So I can click on it and you can see here's the larger designs. And if I scroll over, there are the smaller designs. So I'm gonna start with the larger letter in the middle first. So I'll just select the letter I want. Again, I'm gonna choose the B for my last name. And that opens it up. Now I want to switch to a bigger hoop because I'm going to add additional letters. So on the left hand side of my machine screen right here, it says medium. That tells me I have the medium hoop selected. So you can select that and then you can change. In this case, we'll choose the oval hoop, which will be big enough to do our monogram. Now notice I have the grid turned on and you can see this little grid right here. If I touch it again, it goes away. I touch it a second time, it shows me just the center point. And if I touch it a third time, it shows me the grid. When you're lining things up like this, it's helpful to have that grid so that you can organize your letters and, and uh, make sure they're straight and visually aligned. So I'm gonna leave the grid on. Now we'll close that and we're ready to add another letter. So right over here in the layers, I can just click this plus, it's super simple, touch plus. And then we're going to slide over and choose the C for the first initial. And now you can actually just reach right on the screen, touch and drag across your machine screen. So we're just going to touch and drag that over to the left. And then now we're going to add the K. So we go back to the plus, choose the letter K, and touch and drag it to the right. Now, if I want to see if I'm really good and lined up, I can zoom in here with this zoom tool and now i can use the grids to help me line everything up so if i want to kind of count over this is one two three four grids or so from the center and i'm going to move this k about four grids over from the center 
Now, for some of you, lining it up visually is going to be good enough, and you're perfectly happy with that. But some of you want, may want to be sure that it's exactly along that horizontal plane. Let me show you a little trick on how you can do that. If you go to your information screen here, you're going to see that there's a yellow box around the move icon. And this tells me that it's not exactly in the center. It's been moved off the center. So if I touch it, I'll actually see exactly how much it's been moved from the center. So here, this tells me how far it's been moved along the X position, which is 297. And here, it tells me how far it's been moved along the Y position, which is negative 15. Well, I want it at a Y position of zero so that it's perfectly straight across. So you could use your knob to change it, use your multifunction knob, or you can actually just touch that Y and it sets it to zero. So anytime you touch that motif that has the yellow box around it, it's gonna set it back to default. Then I can do the same thing with this C over here. We can select the C and then we can touch the Y position and then we now know that these are lined up. Now, what about my B? When I touch the B, you'll see that it is in the exact center. Its X position and its Y position are both at zero. So now we know for sure these are lined up exactly right. Okay, now we've got these lined up. We wanna add a border to this. But before we add the border, we wanna group these together so that if I move one, for example, if I move this B, I'm only moving the B. But I now want these to work as a unit. So let me touch that back to the center and let's group these together so they work as a unit. Now the grouping function you're gonna find on Bernina machines that have full embroidery capabilities. So that's gonna be your B500, your B590, your B700, B790, and B880. All of those are gonna have this grouping function I'm about to show you. To do the group, you select the group icon and then all you have to do, I've got the B selected in my layers. When I touch the group, it takes whatever was on top and groups it together. So whatever was on top, it now is grouped together. The C and the B are grouped. So again, the K is now on top of the C and B. So if I click group again or touch group again, then it's going to group all three together. So now we have all three of these grouped together and we can uh, add the border. So let's go to the plus and scroll over to the border. What's nice about the borders with this collection is they're already sized and ready to fit these particular monograms. They're ready to go. So if I select this one, this is my favorite one with the arrows, you can see when I look at all the layers, it's perfectly aligned for these three monograms. It's ready to go and ready to stitch. So at this point, I can close out all my editing and go straight to sewing it out. Ready to stitch. Okay, so now we've created a three-letter monogram with using pre-digitized monograms that are digitized for monogramming. One thing that you may want to notice here is See how we have these little swirls? Um, these are just like a straight stitch swirl that are um, lighter in stitches. So when I sew this C on top of this B, there's not gonna be too thick of a stitch. You're going to be able to stitch one on top of the other. And it was digitized that way. When you start combining letters together, you do need to be conscious of, are you stacking two layers together that are too thick? So it's just something to pay attention to. You don't wanna have two layers of satin stitches on top of each other. You kind of end up with a bump there. So just something to watch out for. Let's create a new design, but this time we're going to use the built-in lettering. So here we're going to select a new motif. And this time we're using the built-in lettering to the machine. So instead of selecting my USB stick here, I'm going to select the machine. And once I have the machine selected, I'm going to now choose the built-in lettering. Here in the built-in lettering, I've got the um, different font types that I can choose from. And the fonts that I have available will vary depending on what machine I have. But my favorite is the anniversary font. 
So here we're going to select the anniversary font and we're building another three letter monogram. So I'm starting with the middle and we'll enter the B and then select confirm. Now I want the middle letter again to be bigger than the other two letters. So I need to size it up. And how much you size it is going to just depend on your preference. And you're just gonna to have to play around with it to see how much you wanna size it. From the default, I've played around with this and I think about 40% bigger is pretty good uh, to give me that differentiation that I can tell that middle letter is bigger. So we'll select the enlarge icon and then we're going to use the multifunction knobs to, to, and just turn that knob to the right until we are all the way up to 140%. Okay, so once we're at 140%, now we can add our other two letters. So just like we did with the pre-digitized monograms, we just touch the plus, we choose our font again, and this time we'll choose the C and confirm. And now we can just touch and drag it into place. And then we'll add our K. So we go back to the font, select the letter K and confirm. And now you can drag it over to the right. Now, again, we can use our move icon to set this so that all three of these are on the Y position of zero. So we know they're exactly lined up. Let's zoom in on this. And I want you to take a look at these three letters. Notice these are all satin stitches. So I haven't stacked them on top of each other. But every font has slightly different shapes. And notice how this B kind of curves over to the right. And so that creates this sort of open space where it looks like they're not quite even, even though if you look very carefully, they actually are spaced very neatly from the furthest point, they're spaced pretty evenly. But because that B is kind of curving over to the right a little bit, it creates this open space. So maybe you're not bothered by that, but if you're somebody like me, you think I really like those letters to nestle a little closer together. What you can do is just be creative about how those letters fit together. They don't always have to go in a straight line. So you could actually take and drag this C so that it nestles right up into that open space and then drag this K so it is down to the right. So this time now our letters are going a little bit at an angle, but this way they nestle together a little bit better. So don't be afraid to play around with the positioning of your letters so that you like the way they look arranged together. So once we're happy with this, we are ready to stitch it out. So now we have looked at how to create monograms with your machine lettering. And here you can see the, um, the three different uh, monograms. This is one stitched out with that anniversary font. But now let's look at how we can create monograms with our software. So with our software, we can actually create monograms very easily. And um, we're gonna show you how to do that in two different software programs. First in the Bernina software 8.2, and then in the toolbox software. One of the things I really like about doing monograms with software is you can use true type fonts with the Bernina embroidery software 8.2. So you can actually choose fonts that are designed for uh, typography. So they were used that you could uh, install for using in your word processing programs and so on. You can use them in your embroidery software and convert them to stitches. And there are lots of free true type fonts available out there or some that are for pay, but lots and lots and lots of types to choose from. This particular one that you see on these shoes is a monogram called Free Monogram, and you can find it at dafont.com. So let me actually show you in the Bernina Embroidery software how easy it is to create your own monogram. So I've opened up just an empty blank embroidery design in the embroidery software. So I've got nothing there. And I'm going to start with the digitize tool. Under the digitize tool, I can choose monogramming and then a special monogramming docker opens over to the right. And it has four tabs. So in these four tabs, we have designs, we have letters, we have ornaments, and we have borders. And we just go from left to right. So I'm going to choose this style of monogram. And you can see once I choose it, it pops right on the screen. Next, I choose my letters. 
So here we have uh, letters, and these letters are going to be in the order they appear. So when it says A, B, C, the B is the larger middle one. So when I type this in, I'm going to type in C, B, K so that the B is the middle letter. And you can see that it's larger. Now you can change your font right here in font types. And there are a lot of pre-digitized font types, and those are going to give you the very best quality. But you can also choose your true type font. So if you keep scrolling, all the true type fonts you have installed in your computer will also show up as available to Stitch. Now with true type fonts, those are being uh, auto digitized, if you will. And so you want to be sure you do a test so before you actually commit to stitching it on your project. Um, but I'm just going to leave it with the font, the default font, the London font. And now we've got the ornaments. The ornaments are these two little bits right here. And I can change them just by choosing change and going from patterns and picking a different pattern. And now you can see it's changed. And then finally, there's borders. This particular monogram style has a border on it. And right now it has a satin stitch outline, but you can change it to a different type, like a pattern run. So I like the satin stitch. I'm gonna switch it back to the satin stitch. Now this is ready for me to stitch. I can actually go to right to the machine, select a USB stick and send this design to my machine and I'm ready to stitch. So just a few clicks and I've got a monogram created. Now, if you're interested in doing monograms with the embroidery software, we actually have another webinar coming up on May 28th. And you can go to Bernina.com under Learn and Create. You'll see the webinars listed there and sign up for this webinar on May 28th. And Debbie Lashbrook is actually going to go through the Bernina software 8.2 monogram docker so you'll get a lot more information and a step-by-step -step process of how you actually create monograms with the embroidery software so now i'd like to show you how to create monograms with another software program called toolbox toolbox is a more beginner software um, and it's got a, a really special monogram module that you can uh, that you can purchase that's just for doing monograms. So I'm going to show you a video um, that's created by Sylvain Bergeron, and he's going to walk you through how to create a monogram with the Toolbox software. Let me show you how easy it is to create a monogram in Toolbox. First, I'll create a new file, and I will call it Monogram. When the editing screen opens up, the monogramming tool is in orange on the left. When I click on it, its options will open up on the right. Since the heart of a monogram is really the style of lettering in the middle of it, let me pick an alphabet first. There are 25 monogramming alphabets in Toolbox, and each one has three versions, a one, a two, or a three letter. So that gives me complete flexibility in styling my monogram. One that I like particularly is called Diamond because it is a classic shape and when in doubt it will make a beautiful monogram. So the Diamond two letter option will let me type my two letters here at the top and you can see that it's automatically generated on screen. If I decide to make it larger, let's say I want a two inch tall monogram, I can just type the size and press enter that will automatically be reflected again on screen. So there are never surprises. I know exactly what the end result will be. The last thing left to do really is add a decoration if desired. I could send this to my machine now and stitch it out without a decoration, or I can enhance it by adding a decoration of my choice. And that is now ready to send to a machine. All I have to do is click on the export button, put it on the USB stick, and go to the machine and stitch it out. Now, wasn't that easy? That absolutely was so easy. So I love Toolbox for creating monograms. And there are a lot of different monogram styles built right into that software. So now we've explored four different ways of creating monograms. And we want to now look into actually stitching it on something. So we're using a towel uh, as our monogram project. And perhaps you've gone to monogram a towel before and you didn't know where do I put the monogram? 
Well, there's a couple simple rules. When you are measuring for a monogram, you're measuring from the bottom of the towel to the bottom of the monogram. And there, you, of course, you can put it anywhere you want, but there are some sort of standard rules. And with bath towels, it's typically four inches from the bottom of the towel to the bottom of the monogram. And then if you've got a border on that bath towel, it's usually two inches above the border. So again, from the top of the border to the bottom of the monogram is two inches. Then with hand towels, you're typically two inches from the bottom border of the hand towel or one inch above the border. One little tip is to always remember to place the monogram on the opposite side of the label so that when you hang the towel up on the wall or on your rack, the label side is at the back. So let's take a look at how to really successfully monogram and stitch on a towel because there are some special uh, techniques to make sure you have a successful stitch out when you're stitching on a towel. So I'm going to show you a presentation from Kay Hickman, who is going to walk you through how to actually monogram on a towel. And she's going to show you several tips. One of the tips she's talking about is called pinpoint placement. And pinpoint placement is a function that allows you to line up your design without having to mark it and use a grid to position it to start with. Uh, that pinpoint placement function is one that's found on embroidery machines with the full embroidery capability. So the same ones we mentioned earlier that can do the grouping can also do this pinpoint placement function. So let's take a look at that presentation. This video is intended to give you tips and techniques for embroidering on towels. Mark the placement for your design. I've marked a center line in the center of the towel and drawn a horizontal line about two inches up from the top of the band. It is best to hoop the towel and the stabilizer together as in one unit, but I'm embroidering on a very thick Turkish towel today, so I need to employ what is called the hoopless method, where you hoop the stabilizer by itself and then affix the towel to the top of the stabilizer. I have chosen OESD Stable Stick Tearaway Stabilizer. I have scored and removed the paper from the top of the hoop. Test the towel in an inconspicuous place to make sure that the adhesive surface does not pull the loops of the towel. We're going to position the hoop so that the bulk of the fabric falls over the brackets of the hoop. Slide the hoop underneath the towel in the area to embroider and then smooth it into position with your hands pressing firmly against the stabilizer. There is no need to take great care in positioning the towel in the center of the hoop if you have pinpoint placement. The hoop is attached to the machine with the bulk of the towel to the left. Since this towel is so thick, the foot will tend to ride very close to the surface. We can fix that in the setup menu. Select the settings icon, embroidery settings, and then fabric thickness. The default is at 4 millimeters. This can be adjusted to either 7.5 or 10. I will select 10 millimeters and then I'll close the screen. This will allow the presser foot to glide along the top of the towel much easier. We will need to use pinpoint placement in order to make sure that our wording is straight along the line that we marked. Select information, pinpoint placement, and then select the grid. I want the bottom of the design to be right along the line that I marked on the towel. Since I have marked the center, I'm going to touch the center bottom dot. The needle will move to that point on the towel. I need to move the needle from that point to my marked center. For the first dot placement, we can use either one of the multifunction knobs to move the needle to the marked center on the towel. Lower the needle to ensure it's in the right spot, then touch set on the screen of the machine and the dot on the screen is surrounded in yellow. For the second dot, I am going to choose the bottom right dot. The needle moves to that point on the hoop towel. I will need to move to the line of drawn on the fabric using only one multifunction knob. Since I will be moving left and right, I will use the upper multifunction knob to align the needle with the drawn line. Touch set when the needle is directly over the drawn line. Place a piece of OESD stitch 2O over the top of the towel. This will control the nap and make the design stitch much prettier. 
stitch a design basting box around the perimeter of the design. This will help to control the water soluble stabilizer. Use your foot control instead of the start stop button. When you lift your foot from the control, the machine stops immediately. This will give you more time to adjust the water soluble topping as you stitch around the perimeter of the design. Start the machine again and continue to stitch out the design on the towel. Clip any jump stitches on the top of the towel before removing the water soluble stabilizer. Support the stitches with your fingers as you tear the stabilizer away. Remove the excess stabilizer from the back of the towel. Enjoy your newly embroidered towels. And so we want to use that basting function on your machine. And with that basting function, you actually can use the foot pedal, the foot control of your machine to stitch. That's something that's unique to Bernina is you're actually able to, instead of just pushing the go button on your machine and having it stitch out the uh, basting stitch, you can actually use your foot control and press down on the foot control and then it will stitch as you press down. When you let up, it stops stitching. So this is a great way to control as it's stitching that um, basting box in place, you can control how fast it's going and that allows you to move things out of the way and to make sure that nothing gets folded on top of itself while it's stitching. So those are some tips that are really important to help you get uh, really quality stitch out on your towels. Thank you, Christy. Well, our uh, popular question that we had was how did you embroider on those shoes? <laughs> I thought we might get asked that question today. Well, really, that's a topic for its whole own webinar, but I can give you the basics. Um, what you're going to do to embroider on a shoe, um, and actually, let me pull that screen up here and show you a picture of the shoe so that you can uh, see what we're talking about. Okay. Um, so with those shoes, you've got to, first of all, completely take the shoelaces out. Um, so in order to stitch on the, the tongue of the shoe, you got to completely take the shoelaces out so that you can pull that tongue completely away from the shoes. Now, the next thing you're going to do is use an adhesive stabilizer. So something like stable stick uh, stabilizer. And you can then um, peel away the paper lining and it's sticky. And then you're going to stick that tongue onto the hoop but it's really important that you stick it near the bottom of the hoop because if you try to imagine if you were to put the um, tongue of the shoe near the middle of the hoop, your, your shoe is gonna get in the way. It's gonna get there under your machine arm. So you've gotta move that design down to the bottom of the hoop, place the tongue near the bottom of the hoop, and then you actually have to support the shoe while you're stitching. Um, so it's a little tricky. It takes some babysitting. You can't just leave it. You can't leave the room when you're embroidering a shoe. You've got to hold it the whole time that you're stitching. And this is another one of those times that it's really helpful to use your foot pedal and actually stitch with your foot pedal so that you can control the speed um, with the embroidery machine so that you can support that shoe while you're stitching it. Okay, great. And do you know if you can group on the 830? Grouping is not available on the Bernina 830. So it actually uh, was added with the plus machine. So the 880, uh, the original 880 did not have the grouping function, but the 880 plus does, or if you were able to get the upgrade to the 880, it does have that grouping function. Perfect. Um, also, can you go back and show us how to change colors? Oh, sure, absolutely. Let me um, pull up my simulator here. And I will build a quick little monogram. and add another letter. Okay, and I'll zoom in on this so that we can see. So we can actually change the color of our lettering right in the machine. Um, here I've got these are individually selected and if I go to this little color palette right here, we can touch it and you can see the different um, designs. These are both at a default black. 
So to change them, there's a little change icon. We touch the change and then we pick the color we want. We can scroll through until we get to the um, type, the brand that we want. So I'm scrolling over until I get to the ice accord. And then I like the numerical chart. So you can just select the color that you want. Now, if you happen to know the color number, like uh, the perfect red, for example, if you touch this little zero to nine, you can actually type it in. So we can say 1902, and there's our poinsettia red. And then I can change the other color with this uh, here on the left-hand side, we just toggle to the next color. And then we can put in, uh, let's say a nice Christmas green. So like 5422 and select it. And now when we go back to edit, you can see those colors have been changed. That way you get a nice preview of what your lettering is gonna look like in color. Great, thank you, Christy. Well, if you have any other questions, uh, you can email me or contact your local dealer. Please join us in future webinars. You can find out about what is coming up by signing up for the newsletter on Bernina.com, or you can go to our Facebook page. On behalf of Bernina, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.